Nicolas Camille Flammarion was a French astronomer and author. He was a prolific author of more than 50 titles, including popular science works about astronomy, several notable early science fiction novels, and works on psychical research and related topics. He also published the magazine L'Astronomy, starting in 1882. He maintained a private observatory at Uvizy sur Orge, France. Biography Camille Flammarion was born in Montagny Loire, Haute Marne, France. He was the brother of Ernest Flammarion, founder of the group Flammarion Publishing House. He was a founder and the first president of the Societe Astronomique de France, which originally had its own independent journal, BSAF, first published in 1887. In January, 1895, after 13 volumes of L'Astronomie and 8 of BSAF, the two merged, making L'Astronomy the bulletin of the Societe. The 1895 volume of the combined journal was numbered 9, to preserve the BSAF volume numbering, but this had the consequence that volumes 9 to 13 of L'Astronomie can each refer to two different publications, five years apart from each other. The Flammarion engraving first appeared in Flammarion's 1888 edition of L'Atmosphere. In 1907, he wrote that he believed the dwellers on Mars had tried to communicate with the Earth in the past. He also believed in 1907 that a seven-tailed comet was heading toward Earth. In 1910, for the appearance of Halley's Comet, he believed the gas from the comet's tail would impregnate our atmosphere and possibly snuff out all life on the planet. As a young man, Flammarion was exposed to two significant social movements in the Western world, the thoughts and ideas of Darwin and Lamarck, and the rising popularity of spiritism with spiritualist churches and organizations appearing all over Europe. He has been described as an astronomer, mystic and storyteller who was obsessed by life after death and on other worlds, and seemed to see no distinction between the two. He was influenced by Jean Reynaud and his Der Aseel, which described a religious system based on the transmigration of souls believed to be reconcilable with both Christianity and pluralism. He was convinced that souls after the physical death pass from planet to planet, progressively improving at each new incarnation, in real and imaginary worlds and lumen, he describes a range of exotic species, including sentient plants which combine the processes of digestion and respiration. This belief in extraterrestrial life, Flammarion combined with a religious conviction derived, not from the Catholic faith upon which he had been raised, but from the writings of Jean Reno and their emphasis upon the transmigration of souls. Man he considered to be a citizen of the sky, others' worlds, studios of human work, schools where the expanding soul progressively learns and develops, assimilating gradually the knowledge to which its aspirations tend, approaching thus ever more the end of its destiny. His psychical studies also influenced some of his science fiction, where he would write about his beliefs in a cosmic version of metempsychosis. In Lumen, a human character meets the soul of an alien able to cross the universe faster than life light, that has been reincarnated on many different worlds, each with their own gallery of organisms and their evolutionary history. Other than that, his writing about other worlds adhered fairly closely to then-current ideas in evolutionary theory and astronomy. Among other things, he believed that all planets went through more or less the same stages of development, but at different rates depending on the sizes. The fusion of science, science Science fiction and the spiritual influenced other readers as well. With great commercial success he blended scientific speculation with science fiction to propagate modern myths such as the notion that superior extraterrestrial species reside on numerous planets, and that the human soul evolves through cosmic reincarnation. Flammarion's influence was great not just on the popular thought of his day, but also in later writers'
others with similar interests and convictions. Both George Griffith and Edgar Rice Burroughs are referring to him in the writing. In the English translation of Lumen, Brian Stapleford argues that both Olaf Stapledon and William Hope Hodgson have likely been influenced by Flammarion. Arthur Conan Doyle's The Poison Belt, published 1913, also have a lot in common with Flammarion's worries that the tale of Halley's Comet would be poisonous for Earth life, family. Camille was a brother of Ernest Flammarion and Berth Martin Flammarion, an uncle of a woman named Zelinda. His first wife was Sylvie Pesher Hugo Flammarion, and his second wife was Gabrielle Renaudot Flammarion, also a noted astronomer. Mars Camille, a contemporary of Giovanni Schiaparelli, extensively researched the so-called canals during the 1880s and 1890s. Like American astronomer Percival Lowell, he thought the canals were artificial in nature and most likely the rectification of old rivers aimed at the general distribution of water to the surface of the continents. Quote, he assumed the planet was in an advanced stage of its habitability, and the canals were the product of an intelligent species attempting to survive on a dying world. Psychical Research Flammarion approached spiritism, psychical research and reincarnation from the viewpoint of the scientific method, writing, It is by the scientific method alone that we may make progress in the search for truth. Religious belief must not take the place of impartial analysis. We must be constantly on our guard against illusions. Quote dot. He was very close to the French educator and researcher Alan Kardec who decoded the Spiritism Doctrine. Flammarion had studied mediumship and wrote, It is infinitely to be regretted that we cannot trust the loyalty of mediums. They almost always cheat. However, Flammarion, a believer in psychic phenomena, attended seances with Yusei Pier Palladino and claimed that some of her phenomena was genuine. He produced in his book alleged levitation photographs of a table and an impression of a face in putty. Joseph McCabe did not find the evidence convincing. He noted that the impressions of faces in putty were always of Palladino's face and could have easily been made, and she was not entirely clear from the table in the levitation photographs. His book The Unknown received a negative review from the psychologist Joseph Jastrow who wrote the work's fundamental faults are a lack of critical judgment in the estimation of evidence, and of an appreciation of the nature of the logical conditions which the study of these problems presents. After two years' investigation into automatic writing he wrote that the subconscious mind is the explanation and there is no evidence for the spirit. Hypothesis Flammarion believed in the survival of the soul after death but wrote that mediumship had not been scientifically proven. Even though Flammarion believed in the survival of the soul after death he did not believe in the spirit hypothesis of spiritism. Instead he believed that spiritist activities such as ectoplasm and levitations of objects could be explained by an unknown psychic force from the medium. He also believed that telepathy could explain some paranormal phenomena. In his book Mysterious Psychic Forces he wrote, In the 1920s Flammarion changed some of his beliefs on apparitions and hauntings but still claimed there was no evidence for the spirit hypothesis of mediumship in spiritism. In his 1924 book Les Maison Hantées he came to the conclusion that in some rare cases hauntings are caused by departed souls whilst others are caused by the remote Remote action of the psychic force of a living person. The book was reviewed by the magician Harry Houdini who wrote it, fails to supply adequate proof of the veracity of the conglomeration of hearsay it contains. It must, therefore, be 
a collection of myths. In a presidential address to the Society for Psychical Research in October 1923 Flammarion summarized his views after 60 years into investigating paranormal phenomena. He read that he believed in telepathy, ether doubles, the stone tape theory and exceptionally and rarely the dead de manifest in hauntings. He was also a member of the Theosophical Society. Legacy. He was the first to suggest the name names Triton and Demalthia for moons of Neptune and Jupiter, respectively, although these names were not officially adopted until many decades later. George Gamow cited Flammarion as having had a significant influence on his childhood interest in science. Honors. Named after him Flammarion. Flammarion. Asteroids. 1021 Flammario is named in his honor, and it is believed that 107 Camilla derives from Flammarion's first name. In addition, 154 Bertha commemorates his sister, 654 Zelinda his niece, and 87 Sylvia possibly his first wife. 141 Lumen is named after Flammarion's book Lumen. R.E. Acutesiites de Linfini, 286 Cyclia for the heroine of his novel Urani, and 605 Uvisia after Uvisi sur Orge, France, where his observatory was located. Dot. Quotations. What intelligent being, what being capable of responding emotionally to a beautiful sight, can look at the jagged, silvery lunar crescent trembling in the azure sky, even through the weakest of telescopes, and not be struck by it in an intensely pleasurable way, not feel cut off from everyday life here on Earth and transported toward that first stop on the celestial journeys? What thoughtful soul could look at brilliant Jupiter with its four attendant satellites, or splendid Saturn encircled by its mysterious ring, or a double star glowing scarlet and sapphire in the infinity of night, and not be filled with a sense of wonder. Yes, indeed, if humankind, from humble farmers in the fields and toiling workers in the cities to teachers, people of independent means, those who have reached the pinnacle of fame or fortune, even the most frivolous of societies, Society women, if they knew what profound inner pleasure await those who gaze at the heavens, then France, nay, the whole of Europe, would be covered with telescopes instead of bayonets, thereby promoting universal happiness and peace. Camille Flammarion 1880 This end of the world will occur without noise, without revolution, without cataclysm. Just as a tree loses leaves in the autumn wind, so the earth will see in succession the falling and perishing all its children, and in this eternal winter, which will envelop it from then on, she can no longer hope for either a new sun or a new spring. She will purge herself of the history of the worlds. The millions of billions of centuries that she had seen will be like a day. It will be only a detail completely insignificant in the whole of the universe. Presently the Earth is only an invisible point among all the stars, because, at this distance, it is lost through its infinite smallness in the vicinity of the Sun, which itself is by far only a small star. In the future, when the end of things will arrive on this Earth, the event will then pass completely unperceived in the universe. The stars will continue to shine after the extinction of our Sun, as they already shone before our existence, when there will no longer be on the Earth a soul concerned to contemplate, the constellations will reign again in the noise as they reigned before the appearance of man on this tiny globule, there are stars whose light shone some millions of years before we arrived. The luminous rays that we receive actually then departed from their bosom before the time of the appearance of man on the earth. The universe is so immense that it appears immutable, and that the duration of a planet such as that of the earth is only a chapter less than that, a phrase less still, only a word of the universe's history. Camille Flammarion, La fin du monde works, La pluralité des mondes habitée, 1862, Real and Imaginary Worlds, 1865, God in Nature, 1866.
Flammarion argues that the mind is independent of the brain. R. E. Acutes de l'Infini, 1872, Lumin, a series of dialogues between a man and a disembodied spirit which is free to roam the universe at will. The novel includes observations about the implications of the finite velocity of light, and many images of otherworldly life adapted to alien circumstances. History of a Comet in Infinity, Distances of the Stars, 1874. Popular Science Monthly V5, August 1874. Translated in English from La Nature, L'Atmosphere, Meteorology Populaire 1888, Astronomy Populaire 1880. His best-selling work, it was translated into English as Popular Astronomy in 1894, Les Etoiles et les Curiosités du Ciel, 1882 a supplement of the L'Astronomy Populaire works, an observer's handbook of its day, Uranie, 1889, Le Planète Mars et ses conditions de habitabilité, 1892, La fin du monde, 1893, is a science fiction novel about a comet colliding with the Earth, followed by several million years leading up to the gradual death of the planet, and has recently been brought back into print. It was adapted into a film in 1931 by Abel Gantz. Stella, The Conuelas Problems Psychiques, 1900, a collection of psychic experiences, mysterious psychic forces, an account of the author's investigations in psychical research, together with those of other European savants, 1907, Death and Its Mystery, Proofs of the Existence of the Soul, Volume 1, Before Death, 1921, Death and Its Mystery, Proofs of the Existence of the Soul, Volume 2 At the Moment of Death, 1922, Death and Its Mystery, Proofs of the Existence of the Soul, Volume 3, After Death, 1923.